Hi. <laughs> Good afternoon. Um, my name is Donna Ahan, and I'm a student at Qatar University. Um, I came here to The Hague um, on a study trip with, uh, organized by my university. Uh, we are 12 students. Uh, we are 12 students. That we come from different parts of the Arab region, like uh, I'm from Qatar, and we have Saudi Arabia, Oman, Sudan, Libya, Algeria, and um, Syria also. Um, so, <laughs> um, we are different, but yet the same, uh, because we all uh, we all want to become uh, lawyers, but we have different reasons for doing that. And uh, ever since we came to The Hague, uh, we, we had each other's back. When one of us was, um, when one of us was uh, sick, the other gave her medicine. And when one of us uh, was too lazy could, to get out to the hotel, and the other brought her food. And when I had to practice for this talk, they all stayed with me instead of going shopping to Amsterdam. <laughs> so thank you. Um, so I think that um, our relationship is slightly similar to that of, of the Arab states. Because uh, um, all, sta all Arab states have the same uh, vision and they have the same belief. But unlike my group, they, they don't know how to cooperate and help each other. And um, this uh, takes us to my story. So my story is that um, I love animals since I was a baby, and I had, I grew up having uh, cats, ducks, chicken, birds, and a parrot that I still have. And um, when I was younger, my my dream job was to become a lawyer so that I could be an animal rights activist. So um, to be honest, I did not care much about the news or getting informed on what is going on outside my country, uh, Qatar. Uh, all I cared about was. Um, that I'm living in a peaceful state and I was being thankful for the comfort that my country provides. So I continued having that dream of becoming an animal rights activist until I realized the horrible truth about conflict and insecurity in the Arab region. The ongoing massacres in Syria shocked the Middle East and the whole world. Um, I could not and I still cannot understand how such obvious breaches of human rights could uh, happen and why no one is stopping them. So I began asking myself so many questions. Wh why are innocent children and families getting brutally killed or having to leave their own country in fear? Where is international law and where is international peace and justice? So as my eyes were now open to the bitter reality, I became interested in human rights this time. I, I believe that many Arabs blame international law for that uh, insecurity that is happening in the Arab region. And I think that, um, I, I believe that there are many reasons for, for this, um, for that belief, but I, ha I, I have um, many, I have a reason that I'd like to share from my own experience. So one of the things that I uh, really enjoy is going out with, like, with my cousins. So whether we had a great time at the movie or we had a great meal. We always have to uh, sit down to talk. And whatever we started, um, whatever was the conversation that we started, we always end up talking about politics. <laughs> I don't know why, but we always do that, almost always. <laughs> so um, each of us would have a strong argument, and each of us might have, uh, sometimes we have opposite, opposite views. Uh, but at the end of the day, we don't know which one of us has the real story because none of us um, actually knows the whole truth about the situation. So I believe that this is one of the main reasons why Arabs blame international law for the, uh, for the insecurity that's happening in the region. Because many Arabs don't know what international law actually is and how it works. So they blame international law for the misgivings of international politics. I believe that I believe that when I understood international law, when I started learning international law, I understood uh, I understood the world um, and the situation that are happening there more clearly. And um, 
in Qatar, actually, we have this vision of 2030, and uh, this vision is to build our nation on knowledge rather than oil and gas. And to achieve that and to engage in the world, what is, there is nothing better than studying international law and understanding our world. And actually, our university is now focusing on studying international law. We're, we're having more courses on international law, and um, that's a good thing. So in times of distress and um, injustice, international law should be our refuge, and we should use it. Um, I believe in international law, although I understand why some Arabs m might have different opinions because of their experiences. So despite the disappointments, I believe that we have not lost, we have not lost faith in international law. And we still have hope and expectations. And this means something. It means that we can still, uh, we can still build and restore trust in international peace and justice. And I'm standing here in The Hague, miles away from my country and my region. And I hope and dream of our own little Hague, a city of peace and justice in the Middle East. Thank you.